Technology in this field is changing so fast. You have to be all the time learning new things and providing new, new opportunities for your patient. That's the beauty of this speciality, but also at the same time the challenge. We are uh, introducing more and more technology to record patients' ECGs at home, in the outpatient clinic. With all this information, we may be able to specify better who is at risk of dying suddenly and take some preventive measures. A doctor is a scientist, so you always have to have a scientific uh, idea of the medicine. In an academic hospital, you have the obligation, the moral obligation, to try to go further. The Arrhythmia Unit has been leading scientifically for many years since uh, the foundation of Arrhythmia Unit by Dr. Brugal and Dr. Mon. We started in Barcelona 20, 30 years ago. This hospital is very special in the sense that it's really promoting a lot of science and creating and teaching a young generation. Our group has been interested in the use of imaging and specifically MRI in treating arrhythmia since uh, many years ago. We have been uh, working together with a group of engineers developing appropriate software to do the analysis. We start with the ventricular arrhythmias. BT ablation today has a recurrent rate of 30%, so we have to use all possible tools to improve this success. If you use imaging before the procedure, you can understand what is going on in this specific patient. We are using CT scan and we are using MRI. Using the high density mapping, you can mix both information to really be sure where do you have to ablate and maybe ablate a lot and not ablate in other areas that are not important for this patient. You have to think in multidisciplinary teams. That's why we are working together with our bioengineers, with our radiologists to get this kind of images and at the end helps the patient. We have to switch from a pure electrical signal approach, that's our traditional approach as electrophysiologists, to a combined approach with imaging. We need to know which patients have an, a disease atrium, how sick is it, uh, just to know whether it will be appropriate to do an ablation. So our research is trying to put in its place what, what, what uh, MRI can add to the process that we do for ablation, for instance. Patients that already had undergone a previous ablation, we can see with MRI where the previous lesions were deployed and really direct our, uh, our process towards the, the areas where we have gaps in the line. We have developed an optimization of the, of the CRT devices in order to improve the clinical and echocardiographical uh, response. We try to do the optimization in a fast form and simple form that is optimizing by ECG. This method is very easy, it's very simple and it's very fast. In less than 10 minutes we can optimize the, the patients. This patient obtained major left ventricular reverse remodeling and also a clinical improvement in the clinical status. Some 15 years ago, Dr. Mon suggested that there was a positive correlation between physical activity and a higher risk of arrhythmias. For this purpose, we are mostly working in an animal model that others have called the marathon rat model. We have conducted additional work that have suggested this harm to the heart is selective for the right ventricle and both atria, but that the left ventricle remains not affected. If we are able to identify what brings these athletes to have arrhythmias, we will be able to detect them, to identify them, and we will be able to prevent them or to treat them. The services we provide here in the Cardiogenetic Unit and the Southern Death Syndrome Clinic is assessment of individuals with a suspicion of this type of diseases. We evaluate the risk of having a ventricular arrhythmia and sudden death, and then we provide management options. This includes simple preventive measures, includes the implantation of the fibrillators to prevent sudden death in high-risk patients, and we also provide genetic counseling. We manage family screening to see whether there are more individuals at risk. 
by having a specific clinic that manages these type of diseases, you can really improve the lives of the patients and also re reduce the risk of death. We've been working together for 25 years with Jose Brugada from the very beginning. What you see now is the task of a lot of time and a lot of people, and I think this is one of the strengths of our group. If you feel the enthusiasm of the challenges of discovering new things or asking new questions, this is the most rewarding thing in the long term.